We're starting tonight with terrible news for immigrants in this country. This week marks a milestone. Two million immigrants deported by President Barack Obama. The news comes from CHIRLA, one of the most respected Latino organizations. No other U.S. president has deported so many immigrants. And despite the deportations, people are still crossing the border. So we decided to go to the border between Arizona and Mexico to find out why so many immigrants are still dying to cross. We went to Mexico to answer a simple yet troubling question. Border crossings are at their lowest levels in years, and yet the number of recorded deaths at the border remains constant. Hannah Hafter of No More Deaths works in Arizona to improve the lives of migrants who are trying to cross the border into the United States. What are we going to be doing with 11 million undocumented immigrants? I mean, I think the important thing is that we don't pit people against each other. The undocumented immigrants who are currently living in the U.S. and need an opportunity to legalize their status and move forward with their lives. And the people who've already been deported, who are trying to get back to their families, they can't be sacrificed for the other people's opportunity. There has to be so a way to address the, the human needs. So what's the way, what's the way to do that? People are in the desert risking their lives because of a failed policy. So what we need is a policy that allows ways for people to enter the country to be reunited with families legally. legally. If people could survive in the places where they live, most people would choose to do so rather than take the kind of risks involved. It's only out of desperation um, that people are willing to put their lives at risk. More fences mean more debt. More fences mean more, more debt. More agents means more debt. Absolutely. According to the latest figures, the National Foundation for American Policy reports border deaths have increased by 27 percent. Think of 350 miles of this between Mexico and the United States. And there's a plan to build another 350 miles, so 700 miles, plus 41,000 agents or so. So as we've been talking, inaction is not an option, no? There are many theories on what needs to be done to solve the problem. West Coast Grove is with a Kino border initiative that provides thousands of meals for migrants per year. We found him at the Comedore in Nogales, Mexico, a few steps away from the border. We've been here for almost five years, um, basically providing two meals a day for migrants. Uh, the majority are deported Mexicans who have been in the United States from a day or two to 30 years. My, in fact, my record here, I met someone who had been in the United States for 39 years. I've seen the numbers, and more people are dying at the border than in the last years. The why, why, the, why is happening? The numbers of people crossing is down, actually. The number of people dying is up. Why? Because of the way that we patrol the border, secure the border with walls and fences, and now 21,000 Border Patrol agents, the migrants are forced into the more dangerous into the mountains, further and further isolated from roads, et cetera. If, if you were to decide what to include in immigration reform, what would you include? Last year, the United States spent $18 billion trying to secure the border. I would take that $18 billion and do something in Mexico. I would do economic development. I would provide jobs in Mexico. We can build 2,000 miles of 50-foot walls, and if people can't feed their family, they're, they're going to risk find. anything. Of course, you would you would do it. I would do it. Anybody would do it. So you, I mean, you're in constant touch with undocumented immigrants every day. The main thing is that no one even begins to address the root causes. The majority, which are, which are economic. So different, not to, uh, to talk about the border all the time, and then suddenly you come here and you realize it's, it's so massive, it's so physical, huh? and. These two countries that are supposed to be best friends and allies suddenly have a wall like this. I, this only reminds me of the Muro de Berlin, the Berlin Wall. At times, the situation is laughable. Tony Estrada, sheriff of Santa Cruz County, knows from experience. I have been working here in law enforcement for 45 years, so I've seen the dynamics, the evolution of the border, everything that's happened. I've covered the, the border story, I don't know, for 30 years probably, and you know all the time we come here, it's the same story. It's an economic problem. They're gonna keep on coming because they can make more money. Every day. Despite a bad economy here in the United States, it's still attractive, it's a beacon for people. So, something that surprises me is that the number of people dying is still the same. 
I mean, last year, almost 500 people died at the border. Why is that happening? It's a policy of the U.S. government and Border Patrol that they are shifting and funneling these people to this remote, dangerous area. So what's the solution? I believe that uh, the increasing the Border Patrol agents is not going to be a solution. I really? Think what, I think what they need to do, they need to adequately fund what they currently have right now. Provide the Border Patrol and the agents, the federal agencies, not only them, but the local agencies. So it's not going to help to go from 21,000 to 41,000? Not in my opinion. Why? Not in my opinion, because I, I think people will continue to find ways. You know, they have the determination and they have the desire and they have that need, and it's going to continue to happen. So it's going to continue to be a challenge. They will find ways. It's a question with a very simple answer. If you want to come from Mexico to the United States, will you do it through here? Or through here. The stalemate in Washington is perhaps the biggest problem. I spoke to several migrants on the Mexico side of the border. They are a small portion of thousands who try to cross every day, making it clear that there are some realities at the border that Washington is not willing to face. Despite the fact what politicians are doing in Washington, people are dying right here. Why? According to Customs and Border Patrol, many more people were crossing in 2005 versus 2012. In 2005, there were over 1 million apprehensions compared to over 300,000 in 2012. Is it the border fence or are conditions getting worse for migrants crossing? Efforts are being made in Washington, but questions linger. What we have seen is inaction um, in the House of Representatives. The Senate came out with a bill that included things that many of the advocates were looking for, but also um, amendments that were hurtful for the community, like um, further militarizing the border. My only thing about border fencing, uh, it's a 14th century solution to a 21st century problem. And anytime we lose one life, it's too many lives. The window of opportunity will close. Uh, and then we gotta wait because you got the 2014 election, then 2016 presidential election. And the next time we don't do it this year, we'll be talking about it in 2017. We believe that we cannot leave Congress, particularly Republicans who control the House, off the hook. Um, every day that we pass by without action from Congress is, is a day where more than a thousand families are being separated and put into deportation proceedings. It's 2014 and we're still building walls. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. A wall will not stop anything. It'll slow them down. It's an option, but it's not the solution. Our mission is to end death and suffering in the U.S.-Mexico borderlands. It has to come from a policy level. It has to come from the system that is creating this in the first place. In the meantime, we should find ways that good, hardworking people who are not only not a threat to the United States, but who are going to make enormous contributions to our country, we should find ways and create ways that they can come legally. Many people think that more fences, up to 700 miles of fences, is the solution for the problem of illegal immigration. However, it is not. It is simply an economic problem. As long as you have people in Mexico or in Central America unemployed or maybe making $5 a day, and as long as they know that they can make exactly the same amount of money here in the United States in half an hour or an hour, they're going to keep on coming and they're going to find a way to get in. So fences, no, they're not the solution. Not now.